everyone, it's Gina from Gina K Designs, and I'm so excited to see all of you tonight here for another episode of Stamp and Chat. Tonight, we're going to be playing with some masking paper, and I've got a couple of fun techniques to share with you. So I'm really excited to get started. I see all of you guys coming in from all over the country and all over the world, and I'd like to welcome all of our viewers from Facebook, from YouTube, and some of our new viewers who are now watching us over on Twitch. If you're watching us on YouTube, we sure would love it if you'd give this video a thumbs up. If you like it, you can wait to see if you like it first, but we'd love you to do that. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love you to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss another video. That notification bell helps you because when we go live, you get a little notification that says, Hey, Gina Kay is going live. Tom's going live. We've got music. It doesn't say all that, but you'll know that when you see the notification. So we'd love to have you do that. Um, all right. So we are going to have some fun tonight. So I thought tonight we could do something using a variety of different stamp sets. And I wanted to do this because I wanted to kind of encourage you guys to look through what you already have in your stamp collection. This isn't about using just one stamp set and it only, you know, this idea only works with one. You've got lots of stamps in your collection that will work with this technique. Um, the other thing I wanted to say for, especially for my YouTube friends, um, so we've had some trolls lately on YouTube that come in after the video and they comment on people's comments that they make not during the live, but after the live. So if you don't watch the video live and you're watching the replay and then you go and make a comment, then these trolls will come in and they'll make a comment. And they are usually, um, I don't know who they really are, but they've got a male profile picture and they've got a male name, um, different names. And they usually say something like, let's say your name is Doris and you make a comment. They'll go, hi, Doris. Um, I'd love to get to know you better. Or they'll say, hi, Doris. Um, the world is beautiful and full of joy. Just like, they're not saying anything really horrible, but I've had people come into my DMs and say, why are you letting these people do this? We're trying to remove them as quickly as possible. And I guess that's my point. So, you know, we go back afterwards and we try to find them and we try to block them from our channel. But if that happens, we're really sorry. And it's not, it's not anything that we're doing. We, we do our best to try to keep the comments as clean as possible, especially during the live. Tom has his finger <laughs> on the trigger and he is sending trolls to outer space so fast. So, all right, you guys. Well, it's great to see you all. I see, boy, the, the numbers are just coming up. You guys are coming in and it's, uh, it's great to see you. All right, so those of you who have tried my masking magic, you probably know that this is a pretty pretty good product. Masking magic is a masking paper. It has about the same adhesive quality as sticky notes, except the whole thing is like a sticky note. And I really like this. It's white and you can stamp on it. So it's great for making masks for flowers where you want to have a bouquet and you want flowers to look like they're behind other flowers. It's great for like little animal sets where you want the animals to be clustered together and you want some to be behind the others. But you can also do a lot of other fun techniques. Now we've done some blending techniques with Masking Magic, but I want to show you a way that you can use Masking Magic to stamp and leave some open spaces. So let's get started with just a little bit of die cutting. I'm going to get my die cutting machine. Oh, and the, uh, the island saga continues. So they're coming tomorrow to pick up that, um, that little beat up vanity that Amazon sent me instead of the island. And um, Tom and I canceled the purchase. And we are going to go with just a big shipping table that we, same kind of tables we use in our shipping department because it's they're very similar to an island. So um, once we get all set up in there, we're going to show you what the room looks like. It's not going to be fancy or glamorous, but we're going to uh, try to set it up this weekend. Right, Tom? Yeah. Yes. Tom is, Tom is off to the side, and he did bring his guitar tonight, so maybe we'll get serenaded during some of the stamping. Okay. So let's go to the overhead here. I am. Um, I have my Spellbinders Platinum machine. 
and that is really, really close. So let me zoom out, get a little bit of airplane view here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to use the Master Layouts 2 die set, and I'm gonna use Master Layouts 4. So I'm gonna use this big design. This is the scalloped uh, rectangle that has the stitching. And then I'm going to use the, from Master Layouts 2, the stitched re rectangle and the plain rectangle. So I'm gonna get a piece of white cardstock. I'm trying to be a little bit, um, I don't know, a little bit planny here. I'm planning a little bit ahead, believe it or not. And I'm just gonna try to die cut for two cards. Oh my word, this can't end well. I'm not good at this. <laughs> I'm not good at planning. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna shove that through the machine. Here we go. <laughs> he will, he'll definitely play some music tonight. Oh, it's great to see all you guys. Yeah, Tom and I went camping over the weekend. We had some beautiful weather here on Saturday, but it rained on Sunday, it rained a little bit on Friday. So we got a nice day in. I don't know if you guys follow me on Instagram, but on Instagram and in my stories, and also here on Facebook, I share some of some of my personal life with you guys. I don't know if you like that or not. You can let me know in the comments if you do. But um, I enjoy sharing what we're doing and what's going on. So hopefully you guys like that too. All right, so I'm gonna get a piece of turquoise CE cardstock. I had to walk away for a second here. Um, so I'm going to cut a flag die out of turquoise C and I'm going to cut one out of wild lilac because I think these are the two colors I'm going to use tonight. And uh, let's see. I think I'm going to use, oh, I'm going to use master layouts three for the flag dies. There's so many flag dies in Master Layouts 3, and I really like them. They go really well with a lot of our greetings. So I think I'll cut a small one out for this. And I don't know, I don't know what I want to do for the purple one yet. I don't even know what greeting I want to use. I don't think I'm going to need a flag for the greeting, actually, on the purple one. So that purple piece of cardstock, that just went along for the ride. <laughs> It just didn't want the turquoise turquoise one to be alone. It just went for the ride. <laughs> okay. Oh, our next release, you guys want to know when that is? That is coming on June 7th. June 7th. Oh, and a lot of people were asking tonight if Tom and I are going to do a live on Memorial Day. And we decided we're not going to do a live on Memorial Day. We are going to take that day off. And we are going to use the weekend to get that studio set up. So we have a nice long weekend and we need the long weekend because we have to test it. And then we have to figure out everything that we did wrong, which is going to be a lot of stuff because that never fails. And then we'll fix everything and then we'll be back next week after that. So, okay, so I'm going to cut a black piece with the plain rectangle. I did the stitched rectangle in white and I'm gonna cut a black piece here with the plain one. This is from Master Layouts 2. And I will list everything over on YouTube in the comments section or in the description. I always um, list everything that I use. So you can get all those, all that information. We do have, I will tell you ahead of time, we have Master Layouts 5 coming in June, June 7th. Get ready. This Master Layouts 5 is pretty amazing. Very different. Very different than the other Master Layouts. So I think you guys are going to have fun. Yeah, we can release some of that vellum too, Tom. We've got that vellum now. We can release that. We will do that. Set it free. Set that vellum free. Yes. Okay. So let's start with this piece here. And let me find my remote. All right, we'll start with this idea first. So I have some masking magic here. Let me get a fresh piece. 
This is the masking magic. You get 12 sheets in this pack. It's a lot of masking magic, which is great because you're going to love it and you're not going to want to run out. All right, this one, obviously, I cut something out of that. I don't know what that was, a Mr. Potato Head stamp or something. <laughs> I don't know what it was. <laughs> but I'm going to use this as my greeting. <laughs> Isn't that what it looks like? <laughs> I'm going to use this as my greeting, one of these. So I think um, oh, I could make this a thank you card, but, you know, there's a lot of graduations right around the corner, so I think I'm going to make a graduation card. So I'm going to use congratulations and best of luck. So I'm going to take my ruler and figure out how much space I want to stamp that in. And I think an inch is gonna be plenty. No, it's not at all because I can't, math is hard. I think an inch and a quarter is gonna be plenty. So I've measured that. That's a little, you know, an inch and a quarter gives me plenty of room to stamp that in there. And what I'm gonna do here is I am going to cut this piece of masking magic to an inch and a quarter, okay. And this paper cutter, some of you guys like this little paper cutter. We do, I believe we have some of these in stock. This is the We Are Memory Keepers paper cutter. I like this paper cutter. I love the Tim Holtz paper cutter, and I use that a lot um, when I'm working, you know, on my own stuff. But I like this one because it matches my logo. It matches my aesthetic. It's turquoise. And if you have all the turquoise things in your craft room, you might like that. Okay, so I didn't have to go quite so big, but I'm going to leave it this way because it's actually gonna help me stick down my paper too. So let's find the place where you peel. And if you can't find the place where you peel, just turn the corner up like that and just scratch on it with your nail and it'll come apart just like that. Okay, so I am going to put this right in the center of my cardstock. Now that's brave, isn't it? To just do that and hope it's straight. I don't think that's straight, but see how nice it peels off? So I'll tell you an easy way to do this. Let's do this the easy way. Let's get our Misty. I'm gonna get the Misty here, okay? And I'm going to lay my piece of cardstock into like up against an edge here, okay? And then I'm going to use the lines on the misty mat to line that up so that it's straight. Now, that's not exactly, let's see, one, two, three, four, five boxes here, four boxes there. So that is not really the best. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and I'm going to hit it right in the center of this box. Once I get it where I want it there... Is that the center? That's pretty close to the center. I think that's going to be okay. That looks pretty centered, right? So just by using a grid, and if you don't have a grid like this, you don't have a misty, you can use something like your score pal. You know, you can find a spot on your score pal and try to line it up with some lines. You can also use your We Are Memory Keepers paper cutter that has a grid on it your Tim Holtz glass mat. Lots of things have grids. You don't realize how many grids you have laying around your craft room. You have more than you know. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put this aside and then I'm gonna tape this down just so that it doesn't move using the excess masking magic. Okay, whew. All right, yes, a zero, a, you, let's see, what did, what did TW say? This is why I have to use a zero middle marked ruler. Why so few? Yeah, I haven't heard of that. So you're right there. Oh, a T ruler will work. Yes. Very good, Linda. Maybe that's what TW is talking about. I, there are definitely T rulers. I should probably get one. Okay. So I'm going to start with a little bit of ink blending. So I'm going to use sea glass for this. I'm going to use sea glass for all my ink blending today. And the only reason why that I'm, I'm doing this is because I want to create some definition along the edge. 
And this is going to do it. But I want to use a light color. Now, if you're into the warm colors, don't use sea glass. Use something like Craft Ink or even Sandy Beach. You can also use lovely lavender, apple mint if you want the greens or the purples. Okay. And so I'm going to, oh, Tim Holtz makes a zero center ruler. Thank you, Sarah. I will look into that. Okay, I'm going to start on the Masking Magic, and I'm just going to work my way over the line a little bit. And I know it doesn't look like much, but it's laying down color, believe it or not. Okay, so there is color there. It looks like all the color is going on to my Masking Magic, but there's definitely color there. So... Oh, Tom, you should play some guitar while I'm ink blending. <laughs> Are you watching for trolls? Always. Always looking for trolls. Now I'm turning this whole thing upside down. Instead of trying to do arm gymnastics, I'm not good at arm gymnastics. So I'm just turning it upside down, making it easy to do the opposite side. All right. There we go. And I'm giving it another little coat. I just want to make sure I have decent definition along that edge. And by starting in the middle instead of starting from the outside, you actually get the darkest color right along the edge and it fades out a little bit as it gets closer to the outside. Okay, so I think that's going to look pretty nice. And of course, you guys know that um, I always post high quality pictures in my Facebook uh, in my Facebook group, Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends, and also on YouTube in my community section on my channel. All right, so now I've got a bunch of different stamp sets here. This is the new incentive stamp set. That one's called Mini Blossoms. So a lot of you have this one if you've placed an order, especially with the sale. You probably have one of these coming if you didn't have one. But also, I like the Autumn Wreath Builder for this, and I like the regular Wreath Builder. So I have both of these in here to use tonight. Now, you don't ha you're not limited to these. Look through your stamps. You can use things like here's a big hello. You could use just the leaf, you know, small stamps that are in any of your stamp sets. And you'll notice a lot of stamp companies do what we do. Um, let me find another one here. Um, okay, here is Wild Blossoms. You've got these little flowers and things like that. A lot of stamp companies, even with a big stamp set, they'll have a couple of big flowers. They have a little bit of space. They'll do little tiny versions of the flowers or, or they'll add some little accent pieces. So check all of your stamp sets because I know you're going to have stuff in there that is going to work perfectly. I also, okay, let's see here. Now, I'm not going to use my Misty for this tonight. I'm going to use stamping blocks because... We're not going to be using the wreath builder, even though we're going to be doing some pattern type stamping. We want this to be a little more random. So I'm going to start with this image right here. That's this one. And this is from the autumn wreath builder. And I'm going to use some fresh asparagus ink for this. And I'm going to start in the middle. And I'm going to stamp on the masking paper and just extending my branches past that. And then I'm going to do something that's sort of the same going in the opposite direction. You want to make sure that it comes down enough because you want to fill most of this card with these little um, these images. I store everything in the Gina K Designs stamp pockets. We have large ones. I store all of my dies, like my master layouts dies, in our stencil pockets. You have a hard time seeing what I'm doing with the comments scrolling? Okay, um, Diane, I think that if you swipe to the right, the comments will go away if you're watching on YouTube. Okay, so now I'm going to, 
I'm going to add another one over here, but I'm going to do this one kind of going in that direction. See, it's the same stamp, but I just turned it so it looks a little different. Like that. Okay. And then I'm going to do one more coming in from maybe like here. right there. All right. So the whole key here is to make sure that at least some of the images are overlapping that masking magic. So let's do another one. Let's do this flower. You can see this flower is well loved. It's been made pink and purple so many times and red. <laughs> so I'm going to use a little bit of passionate pink. And I'm probably going to use a lot of these same stamps on my second card, too. So I'm going to add a flower here. I'm going to add another one there. I'm going to do something similar here, but like that. I don't want it to all look the same. Keep that in mind. So now let's add some purple and we'll do a different kind of flower. Let's add a little bud from this mini blossom set. And we'll do those in purple. And we'll add that maybe right here. Even though there's not really a spot for this little bud, we're gonna add, we're, we're making a spot. here and they don't have to touch don't worry if they're you know not all in the same spot I'll do that one there okay so we're trying to keep it a little bit random now let's go with some jelly bean green we have fresh asparagus on there and let's use one of the little leaves from this set. So we'll add some extra leaves. We'll do this maybe around this flower. This leaf, just find little openings for it. It doesn't matter if they're attached to a flower or not. You can put them really wherever you want. You can attach them. A black line at the bottom of your card. A black line at the bottom. Oh, my gosh. Look what I did. Let's see if I can get rid of it with my mono sand eraser. I don't know where that came from. Well, I'm not starting this card over. I will edit this out of the picture and then remake the card to send it. <laughs> it's not so bad. I don't wanna dig a hole into my card. But it's getting a little lighter. If you guys don't have a mono sand eraser, they're really awesome. They do a great job getting rid of mistakes. That's better, huh? A little better? It's not a black line. I think what happened, did one of my bracelets get caught or something on the ink? That's it. No more jewelry. Jewelry's out. I'm done with jewelry. Not really, but okay. So let's add, um, what should we add next? Let's add... I feel like I want something else. Let's add this little leafy thing. And let's try another color green. We've got lots of greens. Let's do apple mint. And you can see I'm using ink cubes because they're really easy to control. Yes, I could definitely, well, the sentiment's gonna go in the middle, so I can't really cover it with a sentiment, but 
I'm not worried about it. It'll be fine. Let's add some little leaves in here. It's gonna work. Um, where do I wanna put these? I think I was overzealous with this stamp. We can have a little overlappage. Oh, that is pretty. We'll do this down here like that. All right, so I think we need, I think we need something like this one here. But the beauty of this one, which I love, is that you can bend it so you can turn it. So it can kind of go this way or it can go the other way. We can kind of bend it so it goes this way too. If we want it to kind of sprig out that way. All right, let's do this in fresh asparagus. I'm sorry, jelly bean green. I said fresh asparagus, but I know most of you know that that's jelly bean green. Just a little bit of in there. Remember in real life things overlap. So it's okay if things overlap a little bit. And then I feel like we need like a bigger flower like in there somewhere. So we're gonna do one more flower. And I think we're gonna go back to this design again, or maybe we should do, let's do this little sunshiny one. So I'm really sticking mostly to the autumn wreath builder for this. So I'd love to do like a pop of orange in there. Wouldn't that be pretty? Like a little sweet mango. That would be really bright and fun. Yes, sequins, definitely, Diane. That's a great idea. We could definitely add sequins around the outside. So we'll just do a little orange flower in there. Add one over here. One up here. Do one in there. And then we can add a little bit over here just so it's going off the card. Okay. So that's fun and bright. I think that little pop of orange makes a difference. Now I have a Copic marker here. I have G14, which is very, very vibrant green. I don't even know what this is called, apple green. But it's a nice contrasting color to the fresh asparagus. And it's different than, um, you know, the other greens that I used as well. I know I didn't color that, but that's on the masking paper, so that's coming off anyway. I kind of like this Autumn Wreath Builder stamp set a lot because it's got both closed and open images, and sometimes just having that little bit of coloring makes a nice difference. Should we add one more color here? I think we should. I'm gonna add one more stamp because why not? I'm gonna add this tiny little star stamp. Can you see that right there? It's really hard to see, but I will stamp it so you can see it. And it's from the original wreath builder. And this one I'm gonna do in turquoise C. I feel like we need just a little blue in there and we can find tiny little spots to put this. There. I love it. One there. Maybe off the card a little. Okay, that'll be good. Now, now comes the fun part. Check my hands. We're gonna peel this away. And there we have our space 
to put the greeting. Now you can save this and use it again, but remember what happened to me last time when I had black on my masking paper and the black smeared. So if you use black, maybe you don't want to save it, but I didn't use any black on this. So I'm going to just keep it. And um, the way I keep my masking paper is I figure out what stamp set I use with it. So let's say I use it with the wreath builder. I'll just tape it right onto the pocket and it'll be fine and ready to go. Okay, so now I'm going to take that black piece of cardstock that we cut out and adhere these two together. Okay, let's get a little bit of tape. Nobody look there <laughs> when you point to it. Nobody look right there. That's where everybody's looking. <laughs> it's all right. I'm not embarrassed. What was the stamp set you showed at the beginning that had the big spray of flowers? That stamp set is called a big hello. And I'm gonna use that again tonight. So I'll bring it out again to make sure that that's the one that you were talking about, but I'm pretty sure that's the one. You make that a stamp of a lone audacious little flower. This is a lone audacious little flower that escaped. That and a little... <laughs> All right. No, no. <laughs> not making it a flower. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna put this in my Misty now because now I'm scared to stamp because I did all that work. That's true, a bee or a butterfly. You could, there's so many things, absolutely. You could definitely, actually a butterfly would be really cute, just putting a little butterfly angle down there. I like that idea. Okay, so we're gonna put the greeting right here in the center. Oh, and I do have Melanie's bee set. Beautiful bees. So a bee would be really cute. A cercada. Just kidding. I know everybody's dealing with those right now. Make sure that looks even. So I'll just touch it 20 more times till it's uneven and then swear and then try it again. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, <laughs> so I'm gonna use my black onyx ink pad. And I do want to make sure that's tucked under there. Susan, it's okay. You're not that late. You didn't miss much. And I'm doing a, no a whole other card, so you're good. Okay. I'm going to use my Chucky tool. I know I'm off the camera here a little bit. Okay. So there we go. Congratulations and best of luck. Stamp that in there. And then we're going to put that onto a wild lilac card base. I think that will be really fun. So let me move my Misty out of the way. Let's see how that looks. Now I'm not so sure, though. I was so sure I wanted to put it on wild lilac to show off that purple. But now I'm wondering if it would be fun on sweet mango. So let me see if I have a sweet mango card base somewhere. Uh, I don't, I don't, let me get one. We got time, we've got nothing but time. It's Monday night, we're all home, relaxing. Okay, I'm gonna cut it real quick off the camera here. Somebody asked me if I cut all my cardstock up first and I do not, I don't know if I'm gonna like this as much. It is fun though, isn't it? It is fun, but I'm not sure. So what do you guys think? Do you like the sweet mango or do you like the wild lilac? They're both fun. But I don't know, something about that purple lately is really jazzing me. So Tom, you're gonna have to scroll those comments for me so I can see. The sentiment, oh, that's a great question. The sentiment came from this little set called Grand Greetings. Uh, oh, we have a mix here, but I'm seeing more lilacs. Unpleasant? <laughs> Somebody's comment was unpleasant. <laughs> I'm so pleasant. Come on. All right, we're going with the lilac. It looks like the lilac is, is winning. And there's a frowny face, too, an angry face. That's okay. All interaction is good interaction, right? 
although somebody could be angry for me that the island didn't work out, or they could be angry for me that I smeared. Maybe I like to think that when I see an angry face that you're not angry at me, you're angry with me. And I just don't know what I'm angry at yet. <laughs> That's what I'm going with. All right, so there we go. That's gonna be the card. Oh, I love it. And you see, well, you'll see when I take the close up picture, it's a little harder to see, but just having that sea glass blue um, blended along the edge finishes it off wherever there isn't a stamp. Oh, there's a troll. Maybe the troll thinks I'm unpleasant. I don't know who thinks I'm unpleasant. Oh, the circadas. Yes, that's what the angry face is, the circadas. I found out on Facebook that people eat those. And I almost died when I heard that. All right, so there's my first card. Super easy to make, right guys? Super easy, a fun way to use all of your wreath builder stamps. And remember, you can do this same layout with our holiday wreath builder stamps and make a Christmas card this way with the little poinsettias and the pine cones and the pine needles and all of that coming out and then have a big Merry Christmas going across the center. So consider some of those. Now you might even want, my, my greeting is crooked too. I'll tell you, it's just one of those nights, but you guys get the idea. Maybe if I take a picture of it this way, it will look so crooked. <laughs> I'll send it to somebody that can't see well. Um, so uh, you can also use a big die cut word. So that's another option. All right, so I'm gonna put this crooked, stained, messed up card aside, but still, even with all those mistakes, it's still a fun card, right? And you get the idea. That's the purpose of these videos. All right, so now we're going to go to this piece here. And this was cut out using Master Layouts 4. I wanted to say 5, but we're not even up to 5 yet. And I'm going to get this piece of cardstock, this piece of masking magic again. Now this, um, I got to cut this out. My Mr. Potato Head mask that I apparently made. Let's get rid of that guy. Okay. All right, so what I wanna do now is I wanna create a heart. So I don't wanna use our heart die, even though we have a great heart die in the set. I'm going to use a pair of scissors because first of all, not everybody has the heart die. So that's the first thing. And the second reason is because um, I don't want it to be that big. So I only want this heart to be about three inches tall put at the, nah, maybe not even that tall, maybe about like two and three quarters tall. So I'm cutting this down to like two and three quarters. See, because I need room at the top to stamp. So I have to have the heart being a little bit smaller. Maybe I'll even make it smaller than that. I'll go, mm, I'll go two and five eighths. That's going to make all the difference in the world right there, two and five eighths. And I don't want this to be a super wide heart. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in half, this piece of masking magic. I'm going to fold it in half. I should have folded it the other way. I'll fold it in half the other way. Is there a master layout set that's good for the wreath builder? Mm -hmm. Yes, master layouts three is the perfect die set for the wreath builder it cuts out the panels that fit inside the template and all the circles work with the different um sentiments that we have for the wreath builder it's the perfect one for the wreath builder plus it works for a lot of other things okay let's see so um what i'll do is again i'm going to take pictures of these cards so you'll be able to see everything up close and get a better idea of what it looks like. So I'm gonna start right down here at the fold and I'm just going to cut a big, wide, big, nice, fat heart. Okay. All 
right, so that's a pretty good heart, right? Nice big fat heart for the center. Okay, so now I'm gonna peel that backing off. That has a little nub in the center. You see that little nub? Oh, you can't see it. See it there? It looks like a butterfly head. I'm gonna trim that off. That's just because the masking paper was a little rippled because I, I folded it one way and then the other way. Okay, so now let's see, is the backing, I know that there's a way to op open this, but I don't know where it is. So I'll do my trick again where I'll just fold it and I'll use my nail to just pull the liner off of it. Ah, do you see what I did? do that. I'll do it up here at the side. I found the one piece of masking magic where I used the crack for the Mr. Potato Head that I cut out. <laughs> I don't know where the crack is on the rest of it. It's a good thing we have music, Tom. Can you peel this for me, Tom? <laughs> While you're playing the guitar and destroying the trolls? Okay, so I know people are helpful hint when freehand cutting shapes. Turn your paper rather than the scissors. Okay, I will do that. There we go. Okay, that took forever. It's the longest part of this card. Okay, so I'm going to put my heart in the center here. And I'm just eyeballing this. Pack it down. Now I'm gonna use, this is a very fat puffy heart. It's not quite as pointy as I wanted it, but it's okay. I'm gonna use this stamp set, the words to this stamp set, and this is a big hello. And I'm gonna use the hello in the heart. And I like this word, and you can use a word die too, because it's got like lumps, like a lump for one side of the heart and a lump for the other side, so. I pulled that out and that's gonna fit into my heart. So I feel good about that. Okay, so now we're gonna go back again with the sea glass ink like I did. You can't hear Tom? Tom, play a little louder. <laughs> okay. And I'm gonna start in the middle of the heart again. And I'm going to work my way out, just creating that mist of sea glass around the outside. Oh, if I had Rena here, she'd be yelling at me. <laughs> Although her nails, right? That's right, Rosalie. She's got those nails. She could have um, taken that backing paper off very easily for me. Okay. So again, all I'm doing here is creating a perimeter around the outside of the heart to define the shape a little bit more, just in case there's areas that I miss with my stamps. Okay. And you can go out a little further if you want. It's totally fine, whatever you wanna do. My big puffy heart, it kind of looks more like a butt than a heart. <laughs> So I apologize for my butt cheek card. <laughs> huh. All right, we're going with it. We're going with it. I'm going <laughs> to... I hope you guys are laughing. <laughs> Just give me a few laughs if you don't mind. <laughs> Hit the laugh button. <laughs> All right, I'm going to use that same stamp from the Autumn Wreath Builder again, that big fluffy one. And I'm going to add some. Now this is gonna be very similar to the wreath builder where I'm kind of following it around like that, but I'm freehanding it. Tom, do you see a butt? Well, now. <laughs> Oops. That is just my luck that I would make a wreath butt. <laughs> Thank you for the laughs. It makes me feel good that you guys are finding the humor in it. <laughs> All right.
righty, here we go. Okay, so there, I created that. I'll work on the crack in a minute. <laughs> oh, oh my God. <laughs> oh, don't just look down, Lord, help me. Okay, so I am going to use flowers again. I'm gonna go back to this little flower. Reef butts are fun. Thank you, Sue. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> and I'm going to add a couple of flowers in here just randomly around. So let's do flower here. And again, I'm crossing over the line of that masking paper because I want this to kind of appear as though it's coming out from underneath the heart. And we'll do one here. We'll do one here. Ooh, that kind of squished. One there. And we'll get one up here like that. Because I don't want it to be too perfect. Sometimes it's hard too because you know you, you're so used to trying to make things even when you're stamping that you forget not to. Okay, let's use this bud stamp again and we'll add some lovely, I mean, wild lilac, not lovely lavender, wild lilac. And we'll add that in a bunch of random places here. Let's just add, um, we'll do one here. <laughs> oh my goodness. And we can add some off the heart too. It's okay to do because we're gonna add more things in there. So some will go off the heart, just to really fill up the card. There we go. Okay. And remember it was kind of looking like a mess. You gotta admit, it was looking a little bit like a mess and then it didn't look like a mess anymore after we took the masking paper off. So just be prepared for that. So let's use some fresh asparagus. I'll just use my pad for this. Again, I'm using stamps all from the Autumn Wreath Builder right now. Yeah, I'm gonna put something right here at the top of the crack. <laughs> there we go. Oh, it'll be our little funny secret. That's why you have to be here. You have to watch these live because we never really know what's going to happen, do we? We never know how I'm going to just totally screw it up. But it's usually fun. Uh, let's do one up here like this. Okay. Okay. I feel like we should do more up here. So I will, but I'm going to use different leaves for that. So I will use, um, I'm going to use these leaves again. This is from the incentive set, the mini blossoms. I feel like I'm going to go into work tomorrow and everybody's going to be laughing, talking about my butt card. Okay, I'm going to go with some jelly bean green. Okay, we'll get a leaf in here. Get one in here. We can do one. Hmm. Again, we can go off. They don't always have to be right on the the wreath. One in there. I just want to get that color evenly spread around. Might do. Let's take a look at that. It's looking pretty, isn't it? And it's not perfect. That's what I love about it. It's not perfect. We definitely need to do something up in here. So I'm gonna get that real tiny little star flower that was from the regular wreath builder and we'll add in some turquoise C. And then we can always go back and add more if we need to, but we definitely need something there. Something there, there. I'm just throwing these in anywhere. Just kind of spreading that blue around a little bit. Okay. Then let's use the same stamp, but let's use the orange again. 
So we'll use the sweet mango. We don't have to put a lot of them in, just a couple. I definitely want to put one up here. I feel like it needs something there and something down here. Maybe right there. And then I got to squeeze one in up here somewhere. I think I'll do one ah, like right here. Just get a little bit sticking out. Okay, now before we reveal this, I'm going to um, color in again using the Apple Green Copic marker. This is G14. And then we'll pull the butt off and see what we have underneath. Uh, thanks for being patient with me, guys. I don't know what's wrong with me. My mother may have dropped me a few times when I was a baby. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. And I'm not obviously not doing any fancy shading. These little openings are just tiny little openings for just a splash of color. And you know what looks really pretty when you color fresh asparagus? You color these in with um, like a teal too or an aqua blue. That's kind of a fun look. All right, so there we go. Here we go, I'm gonna pull this off now. There we go, there's the heart, isn't that pretty? Now, if you look at this and you go, you know, I like it, but we need something up there. There's just something missing right there. You can always go back in and um, you can add a little something in there. I feel like that spot right there just looks a little dead. And so what I'll do is I'll just add one of these little leaves in there just to fill that in. I just felt like it needed it. And I used jelly bean. Now you can see that looks a little darker than the rest of the jelly bean because you know as our ink dries, it dries up to the coordinating color of our cardstock and it has a smoothing agent in it. So it gets very, very smooth. All right, so let's go. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys are making such nice comments that there's nothing wrong with me that I'm just a little crazy. <laughs> and I know that, <laughs> I know I'm crazy. Okay. So let's get this off of here so we don't have that mess to deal with. And we'll pop this up in the corner. And again, this can work in the Misty even though it's got a scalloped edge. And let's put that big hello stamp in there. I think that is gonna look perfect in the center of that heart. Okay. So we'll put that right in there and we'll move it up just a little bit. Make sure we get it in there. We're gonna move it up a little bit because remember I cut out this little flag? We're gonna put a little flag underneath there. So we want the hello to be just a little higher. And kind of even, as even as we can possibly make it. It's a very scripty word, so it's not gonna look crooked like the other one, even if it's crooked, because there isn't crooked when it starts out crooked. See, that's what I need to do. I need to design all stamps that are crooked right from the start. All right, I'm using my Chucky tool because I love it. Oh yeah, that looks good. That's pretty, huh? Because it's got that swish over there. So there's like an evenness. I probably could have moved it over a little bit, but live and learn. I don't get too worked up. Okay, so I'm gonna use this same stamp set and I'm gonna use the words, my friend. Alrighty. And I'm gonna stamp that right on this little flag die. So let me get a skinny block. I've got one right here. And I will need some black ink push some of this stuff off the screen. All right, wish me luck with this one. I'm going in cold here. My hair gets in the way, I'm sorry. 
Okay. Yeah, I could definitely do that. Ooh, did I smear it? No, I didn't. That was dumb luck. I love dumb luck. Okay. So I could, as long as this is like down here, keeping things centered, it's good, right? And it looks a little off centered, like you said. I have a little leftover piece of this um, Gina K Designs foam tape. This is by Thermoweb. I have a little leftover from another project. It's kind of thick as far as like, you know, it's kind of wide. So I cut it in half for these little banners. So let's, um, Tom, your music was so nice. Thank you. We really enjoyed that. Okay, now before I put that on, I'm gonna put that on last. I'm going to make my card base. So I have a piece of turquoise C. And since my flag is turquoise C, my card base is gonna be turquoise C to match. Never got that sweet mango in there, right? But that's for another day. Sweet mango is cut now and ready to go. Okay, so we're gonna pop that right on there. No black, right? Scary. I always have black on my cards, but this one, I'm not going to. I'll put that right on that card base. Like that, it's pretty even. And then we'll pop this little flag right on there. And we'll make sure that the little flag is even on my heart butt. And there is that finished card. So here's the other one for your viewing pleasure. We'll turn that so it's crooked. <laughs> we'll turn that so it's crooked. But those are just some really fun ways to use the Gina K Designs Masking Magic. There's other masking paper out there on the market. If you have that, certainly use it. But if you're in the market for some, um, I highly recommend this. I really like it. The one thing I like too is it's not too shiny. So when you stamp on it, it dries really quickly. So you're less apt to smear when you're working with it. That was, that was a bracelet incident. We'll, uh, we'll take care of that in the editing process. So hopefully that won't take away from your inspiration tonight. All right. Well, this was so much fun. I had so much fun with you guys. I loved having you here. I hope you guys had a good time tonight and I hope you learned something new and you'll give this, this uh, masking technique a try. All right, so we will be back on Thursday morning, right? Thursday, well, not morning, Thursday at noon central time and uh, we'll have another fun technique or project for you so i hope that you will come back and join us if you don't mind give this video a thumbs up if you're watching on youtube or if you didn't like it give it a thumbs down that's all right all interaction is good interaction although it makes me sad when i see the thumbs down but I will get over it. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss another video. All right, everybody, we'll be back on Thursday. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy. I love you all so very much. And mwah, I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.